um, Tiff Des talking to us about scaling monitoring. Thank you. Is this thing on? Okay. Good. Yeah. So, when I started work at Booking in October, we were doing only about some 11 or 12,000 checks in Nagas. And as of last week, we are doing something like 65,000 checks, all automatically generated, configured. It's a nightmare. I can tell you that much. So when we start, so we have this setup is basically we have a primary data center in Heathrow and a backup in Amsterdam, so, and you need to monitor across both. And so, so your production, you have PCI areas and you have the corporate networks. That is a lot of monitoring sources to look at. So when you had a few things, it was okay, but management was harder because hey, Nagas has a very ugly interface. So we started off looking for replacements that would still work. And we ended up with Isinga, which is still more or less sucky. At this point, I think the, all the available solutions suck. They all suck differently, and they all suck horribly. So quick check. When we say monitoring, most of us usually tend to mean the testing and the reporting bits. Error handling is. Please wake up the human, send them a page, or a, have a knock person call them or whatever. You test, you basically say, oh, this looks odd, this is broken, this is transient state. So if you're doing something like, say, MySQL replication with a tolerance of two minutes on a transatlantic link, it's permanently blinking. On, off, on, off, humans melt down. Reporting, yeah, we had cacti. Horrible. Add a new device, well, here's the 10 clicks you go through, even if you scripted it. Trending, cacti, eh, okay, how do I know what this is doing across these five different systems? Not a very complex app, but still, you know, you, I want to know what the load balance is doing, what the switch is doing, what the actual host is doing, what the database is doing, and put them all together to get a coherent picture. Not happening. And <coughs> testing, yeah, well, we can test state, but what was it like, you know, in the past three minutes? We don't know. So, SNMP, yeah, we use it. Lots of tools, they all suck, they all suck horribly. The next person who tries to recommend SNMP to, uh, for monitoring to me is probably going to get it in the throat. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just plain bad at this point. <laughs> Service checks, Nagas, variants thereof, take your pick of tool. They all do the same thing. Monitor the service every five minutes, every two minutes, whatever. I have a timeout of two seconds on my connections to the database. If things go wrong, my applications and logs will tell me before anything else, before the monitoring system does. And you don't want to make too many connections from the monitoring system, especially if you run MySQL. It has a few interesting bugs where it will not let go of connections. Hmm. Well, we have a limit of 10, and on a bad day, we hit that in an hour. Right. It's holding on to the connection, stuck there. Again, we don't, how many people here do more than a service that's running across more than one server? That's a lot. Okay. And a lot of people don't. But anyway, if you're looking at any service that is spread across two, three, four servers, I'm really interested in service availability. I can lose a host, I don't really care. If you have 200 hosts doing the same thing, one of them goes down, do you want to wake up at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. right after I've gone to bed on a Saturday morning? Hmm, probably not. And Nagas will wake you up. Why? Oh, the server did not respond in time. Sucks. Error handling, send an email, next thing, page the sysadmin, really wake up that damn sysadmin by causing the pager to melt down. And then you end up doing a root cause analysis and find a human or a computer to blame, hopefully a computer. Or if you're unlucky enough and you have in-house developers, well, sorry, your fault. <laughs> but you made me wake up. Yeah, we hate that. 
that's about the best we have for error handling at this point because you could fix stuff automatically and then you never know that things were actually broken because nobody looks at error logs. Hey, service was up, right? It recovered. Sure. Reporting, well, we have MRTG and variants, MRTG, cacti, take your pick. Trends, basically time series data, horrible, horrible, horrible stuff. But that's more of an RRD problem than anything else. Enterprise tools, yeah, you get prettier graphics, you get slightly better UIs, but not by much. And now we have improved graphing tools, so there's JavaScript frontends, there's Graphite, which does quite a lot of stuff, which I like. We can now do some levels of ad hoc analysis, but often enough, if I have the data, I will just dump it into a spreadsheet. You can at least do correlations. You can do some stuff with Graphite and, or just do a, what the hell, spreadsheets work. Automation, right, with Naga slash Isinga, we just generate the entire config file every 15 minutes. We tried using one of the database backend things. It was a 15 minute restart in March with only 22,000 services, 22,000 change. So yeah, 15 minutes to restart, we restart every 15 minutes. There is no such thing as monitoring. <laughs> It's barely useful at this point, however you auto-generate configs or not. It's extremely hard. Requirements that we need to think of, well, I, yeah. Deal with thousands of servers or services. You, we are growing at about 1,800 to 2,000 servers over the next year. And if we are unlucky, we'll do that in the next six months. Just as business requirements. You want one location for operations. You don't want to go off to 10 different Nagas instances or take your choice of monitoring tool. You want to go to one place and say, manage it from there. You want to go to one place for to get your data analytics out. And you want to be able to monitor it from a dozen different locations. Hey, if your service is reachable from the inside but not the outside, you have a problem. If your service is reachable from the outside, not the inside, you still have a different set of problems. Is it reachable cross DC? Is replication working? Is my D is DR even possible at this point? Lots of options. The knock, I think, is more or less an anti-pattern. Having a human there to do first level diagnosis is something that I want to solve. It's not solved yet. We need a distributed data collection thing, which I just said, monitor from a different set of different locations. Or even better, just let the host tell me what its current state is and let the monitoring system basically say, I got an input, the host is up, this is within parameter limits, not within parameter limits, go out. Has to be able to deal with change. Host come, host go, and the faster you scale up or scale out, the worse it gets. Ideally, you want to be able to do this thing automatically. I haven't written code yet, but I am going to, if I don't find a decent alternative, I am going to have to write this myself. God help the world. So you have to be able to do host, service, and dependencies. Services depending on hosts and vice versa. Uh, so I looked at a, quite a few tools out there. They all, as I said, they all sucked. The best ones I have found so far have been Graphite. Uh, Sensu does some interesting stuff with Nagash checks, but passive monitoring where the host will pull down information, will push information to you. What its uh, alerting system works okay, but the monitoring sucks. In you can't really tell if a host is up unless you actually have something that actively checks when the host last sent information in. There is uh, the Ryman thing, which is doing extremely interesting stuff with events. But the bad thing is it's closure and protocol buffers. It's the protocol buffers that are more of a problem from my perspective. It's a big political thing at work. We are a very big pearl shop, so statically type stuff is irritating. And otherwise, good stuff, there isn't really much. We have a homegrown event system, which we are moving over onto graphite for some bits plenty of time and we are then looking at 
hopefully you can get somebody to push that out but that's basically doing something similar to Riemann except that at the moment it just outputs graphs. Outputting graphs is extremely nice when you're looking at trend analysis but you know what I still want systems to tell me what they're doing. Don't tell, don't ask me to look at a graph every day. It's kind of boring, it's kind of irritating and business value metrics never show up in that thing. What is the business value of your monitoring? That's where I generally would prefer to start from for a system like this where it says this is my business value therefore I'm going to monitor these things and have these parameters and if you can work that backwards every alert of yours has a dollar value attached to it which does make it a lot nicer in terms of being able to say I have this problem and it is costing me so much I have this other problem which is not costing me so much I will push it down even though it generates a few more alerts questions Hello. Hi. If you've got questions, can you raise your hand so we can catch them on the AV? Thank you. Well, I would like to disagree, basically, to disagree on basically every point that you said. <laughs> That's not a question. Yeah. No. Yeah. As, a, as a comment. Yeah. Well, you say that about monitoring service, for example, uh, monitoring service, not server. Right? You can do it easily with measures. Just set up like the check against the VIP, not against real IP. Easy. You say a restart takes too long. It, it doesn't take too long if you just use objects cache. Uh, it takes seconds. Right? If you don't configure it, well, yes, it'll be a problem. Monitoring for multiple locations. Easy. If you do passive checks, or just use more gaming. Uh, graphs. Just use PNP for measures. Easy. Uh, there are, of course, problems with measures, like it's monolithic configuration. So if you don't set up like one of the services right, yes, basically, configuration will not load, and that is bad. User management sucks, right, basically. Uh, another thing that you mentioned is ad brand behavior. So basically, checking for, for the trends. But that capability is not, is part of RID. It has been part of RID for 10 years, just that it is not explicit. And we just yeah. need to set up an extra check that will use that capability. That's it. Right. So I have done all the Nagas tuning bits. And I have run, I have managed to run out of CPU with Icing at about 50,000 checks passive. Again, the problem for me, if you look at it the way I am thinking of this, is that I have two seconds in which I need to be able to send you back a page at most two seconds. Nagas polls every five minutes. I am doing maybe 15, 20,000 requests in those five minutes. That's a lot of business. Well, normally you still have multiple information instances. Or like, are you just more DM or basically spread the load really? No, it's not a question of load. Yeah, it's I a question of saying I am polling every so often. My requirement for data is a lot less it's a much smaller time frame i can't do a check every per second it will just kill the system <laughs> all right this isn't a question either <laughs> it's well, not directly hands up Anybody here in this room who would like to join a mailing list to do the sort of distributed monitoring solution that, that, that you need, that you've um, been speaking about the lack of? I, I, would, I would join this mailing list. Who else would? Okay, right, that's there's a lot of people. Uh, about 17 people. More, yeah. Okay. Anybody want to create a mailing list for this, like right now? All right, so. You know what, there is the Monitoring Sucks IRC channel, there is the Monitoring Sucks uh, repo on GitHub, there is a hackathon or right after FOSDEM in Antwerp, or just talk to Chris Buyart uh, and or Patrick Deboy, Ripenar, there's a bunch of people who are involved on this, already working on it. It's just that at this point there isn't a very good solution, but if you hang out and one of the infra talk or something similar types, you'll probably get a place where this is already being discussed. 
it's being discussed in multiple places. What, what do you think of um, having hosts um, auto discover what services they've got to monitor? Auto discovery? Why would I ever want to do that? <laughs> I mean, I, have, I can't think of a situation where I would ever actually care about auto discovery because I would prefer to know that everything I'm monitoring is something that I actually care about. Unless you're in a situation where you have hardware or something that you completely know nothing about. You know, this was put on the network and I don't know what this is. But if you have it right, you already know what you're monitoring, you know what servers you what services you have, what servers you are interested in, and how to monitor them. And if you have if you set up your configuration management right, you deploying a check to whatever servers you want to be able to deploy to is a fairly easy thing. For me, it's a two-click process, two or three-click process to say, I want all my 3,000 Linux servers to get this new check. Three, four clicks, go. It will all go live in the next 15 minutes. Uh, just a quick one from the, from the mic. We could probably do a bot on this, and we could probably do a bot on this, and we could probably do a bot on this, and we could probably do a bot on this, and we could probably do a bot on this, and we could probably do a bot on this, and we could probably do a bot on this. We've got three or four minutes if anyone wants to talk about it now, but having a bot is probably a good plan. They are, but you don't have to have your bot in one of the rooms here. You can have it somewhere else. Yes. Chris Buyert, I'll just message you, the, I'll just walk over and give you the name. I can't remember his, uh, how you spell his name. Yeah. Or just look for the mo hash monitoring love tag. He's doing a thing on, in this thing, Antwerp, on Monday and Tuesday.